Hey guys, in this video demo, I am going to show you um, three different painting techniques that I think might be handy for you as you're muddling through your own acrylic paintings. I'm sure that you by now are facing several challenges. Um, one of the, the f great things about acrylic paint and it's also a drawback to acrylic paint, I feel, is that it dries very quickly. So sometimes that's a really handy thing um, because sometimes you want something to dry so that you can paint right over it. And other times you wanna be able to blend into the paint and it's already dried, like after five minutes. So that can be a challenge. So I want to um, just show you how to overcome that and deal with that within your painting. Um, the first technique I'm going to be showing you is uh, wet on wet blending with your acrylic paint. Um, this would be handy if you say want to go back and add a highlight to something or blend a shadow or obviously blend two colors into each other. So I'll be demonstrating that. Um, and then the second and third techniques uh, I'll show you are scumbling, which is a dry brush technique, and glazing, which is basically the opposite. So those are the three things that I'll be showing you in this demonstration that might um, be handy for you to know in the final stretch of your painting. So here is a um, very rough start to uh, an eggplant painting. This looks like uh, your painting might look like after one sitting. Um, it's acrylic paint so the paint has dried uh, and I want to start adding details into this. Um, so say over here in this area, I wanted to create a highlighted area. Um, that would be a little bit difficult because the paint is already dry. And when you add a highlight, for example, you don't want it to just look like it's added on top. You want it to make it feel like it's sitting in there, like sitting in the painting, like it belongs in there. Um, and that's just one scenario, but just say you were trying to do that in your painting or even like blending between two colors. Um, I'll just show you a couple of different scenarios for wet on wet blending technique. All right, so um, this, I put down a base of just like a random dark green and say I wanted to add a highlight in the middle of that. Now this is already dry, right? This is a layer that's already dry. So that's gonna be a situation that you'll find yourself in a lot because as I said before, acrylic paint dries very, very fast. So by the time you get back to that area, it probably will have already dried. Um, the wet on wet blending technique requires you to work very quickly in one area because the paint dries so fast. So say I just wanted to add a highlighted area in the center of this already uh, dry square of paint that I've applied. So the first thing that I would do, and obviously this is kind of random, I'm not actually looking at anything in front of me while I'm doing this. You would be. But it's the same basic technique that applies. Um, so say this is dry and I wanted to create a highlight as I said. Um, what I would do first is I would try to match this color and put a base layer over it that is wet, wet paint, fresh wet paint, so that I can add my highlight into it and it will, and I, it will allow me to blend into the existing color. So I don't have to do the whole thing because I'm only gonna make one little area brighter, but just gonna get some thicker wet paint there as a base. So matching the color. You guys all have a lot of color mixing experience, so matching your colors as you go along painting and repainting and so on shouldn't be too difficult. Then I'm going to gradually make the color lighter and I'm going to build up to my lighter highlight instead of just adding white in the middle. It won't sit in there well. So I'm going to just gradually let this get lighter as it goes to the middle. Um, so as you can see, that's not really blended in there. So now what I'm gonna do is clean my brush and because it's sitting against wet paint, wet darker paint, I can easily 
sort of feather the lighter value into the darker value. So I've cleaned my brush and I've dried it a little bit. And then I'm going to blend that lighter color into that darker color. And you can see why it would be important to have that darker color underneath um, be re-wet again, because that enables you to really blend it out. So that looks like a nice, pretty smooth transition. Then say it's it's much brighter in the middle, like a highlight. Could add my highlighted area in the middle. Uh, maybe a little bit more. But again, it's not really sitting in there. I've got to blend it out into that surrounding wet paint. So again, cleaning my brush, you can hear it in the background. Getting um, a lot of the excess water off. I'm making my brush pretty dry and then drag out the edges. That really dulled down my lighter value there. So then I might go back, put more white. So say this were like, um, I don't know, what's a dark green fruit or vegetable? Like a zucchini. So say I wanted to add a highlight in an area where light is hitting the zucchini very strong. I'm just saying zucchini because it's dark green. Um, this would be a really nice looking natural highlight. And depending on how shiny your object is, some highlights get pretty bright. So if that's the case, you just keep building up to that absolute brightest value that you see in front of you. But because the paint is wet, that's the key. Because the paint is wet, it's enabling me to blend one color into the other, blend one value into the other. Okay, same thing, I'll just demonstrate quickly. Say you wanted to create um, a smooth, fade from dark to light. Say you're rendering or you're trying to paint a natural looking shadow. Um, and typically as shadows get closer to moving underneath the object, they're typically darker. And as they move away from the object, they usually lighten up and soften up, all right? So say you're in that kind of a situation and you're trying to um, make a fade from dark to light with acrylic paint. Um, same technique, only applying it in a slightly different way. It's got to be wet on wet paint or it's going to be very, very difficult to create an even smooth transition from one value to the other. So starting with wet paint here. Say I want to make this get lighter as it moves across. Working quickly is kind of important because I can tell even as I'm moving across here that this original color that I put down is already drying. It dries so fast. And I still have to go back and blend this out to make it look a bit smoother. It's not really a smooth transition yet. If this were a shadow sort of a situation, you'd want it to be a bit smoother to, be, to look natural. So cleaning off my brush as I go back now to try to make this transition smoother. <coughs> this gets a little too light in here. So that is the wet on wet painting technique and it really does force you to go back 
um, reapply color so that you're able to blend other values um, into that color. So next technique is called scumbling and it's a dry brush technique. It's um, very different than the wet on wet technique. Um, it's a type of technique that you purposely would apply over um, pre-existing paint that has already dried. Okay, so say you have a dark green object and you've already applied the base color um, of this dark green. Again, just a random swatch here to demonstrate this. I'm not actually looking at anything, but you would be. Um, and say it had a, a streaky texture on it that was, say, lighter. Um, so I would leave this existing color dry. Uh, and I would go and mix up the, say, the lighter shade, for example, by contrast. Um, but now I am cleaning my brush. And I'm drying it as dry as it possibly can be. This is a dry brush technique. Redip it into that lighter value and just streak it across the darker value. And as you can see, because the brush is dry, everything is pretty dry, it's picking up a lot of the texture from the paper, which in this case, if you're trying to create sort of a rough texture, whatever that may be, that's a good thing. Depending on what your texture is, your the motion of your brush would be different. Maybe it's a swirly texture. Everybody's painting a different object, so every situation would be different, of course. But as you can see, scumbling just gives uh, a very different look and feel, a lot less smooth than that wet on wet technique that we just looked at. This is an example of a painting that I did in the past of a tree, obviously, um, that I used a lot of scumbling technique uh, within it to create that very um, interesting dynamic texture of the bark on that tree. Um, it had a lot of lichen, um, and moss growing on it and you can't see the whole thing in the frame but it had a lot going on so what I had done as a base put quite simply is I used a lot of the wet on wet technique um, to create the forms of my tree the initial forms of my tree right just to get it looking um, three-dimensional but then from that as my base I really built up a lot of texture on this tree by using all different scumbling techniques. Much of the scumbling techniques were actually applied with a palette knife. Um, there's a lot of really thick paint in through here, um, but because there was really very little water involved, the paint just kind of like scumbled right across that, text, that textured surface, that already textured surface um, to create even more textured areas. So if you're painting a particularly textured object, whatever that might be, you probably might want to apply different scumbling or experiment with different scumbling techniques. Actually, you can see a lot of the texture when I hold this at an angle and the light hits it. All right, so that is scumbling. Last technique I wanna show you here is what's called glazing. Basically, glazing is the opposite of scumbling technique, really, because um, scumbling technique requires a dry brush, um, where glazing requires a little bit more water on your brush. Um, glazing is sort of similar to using watercolor um, because it requires you to mix up a transparent um, layer of paint. So, for example, if I say I'm working on a painting, and um, 
Again, I'm looking at a green vegetable like a zucchini, all right? And it's got an area of shadow and it's got an area of light and I've already blended that out and this paint is already dry. But then I go back and I realize, oh my God, you know, that area of my painting is a lot warmer. Like I see a lot more yellow in there that I, than I originally got um, into my painting. And I wanna tweak that easily without having to go back and like remix all those colors and establish that nice transition from dark to light and make it more yellow, right? So this technique called glazing would enable me to just put a transparent layer over this area that I've already painted and that I've already worked at. Um, it might even have more details in it than this would in your painting, but it, it allows me to just put a transparent um, wash over this area to make it a little bit more, say yellow for example, is the first one that I'll start with. Um, so you need to definitely have a clean brush. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to make a part of this. This is already dry. I've already put this layer down. I'm going to make um, a section of this a little bit more warm, all right, a little bit more yellow. Um, and maybe you see it as a little bit more red, or maybe you see it as a little bit more blue, right? Doesn't matter, this is just a random example. Um, you could do anything to this existing color with a transparent glaze. So I'm getting a little bit of yellow on my brush, and I'm using it almost like watercolor, even though it's acrylic paint. I'm not putting any white into it, because as we know, white, adding white to a color makes it opaque or less transparent. All right, so I wanna keep the glaze. Anytime you're glazing, you're using a transparent color, so avoid putting white in it. Obviously, this only works on certain areas and in certain situations, but it's a nice, simple way to just tweak a color without having to go back and completely change that area of your painting. So right now what I have on my brush is just um, slightly watered down yellow acrylic paint, no white in it, just thinned out with water. And I'm going to make the bottom of this area look more yellow. So you can see that makes an immediate difference. You can see that my yellow is transparent here. And because it's transparent, I'm still able to see that whole value structure, that whole transition from dark to light underneath it. So I didn't lose those details. I was just able to change the overall hue of that area by laying down that transparent glaze. Um, so say you're looking at this existing painting and you realize, oh, actually that area is a little bit more on the blue side, like it's cooler. There's some cool reflective light in that area. Like there's natural light coming in from the window, which is cool light or the blue surface it's sitting on is reflecting up into it. Same thing. Just have a little bit of blue, um, transparent, so slightly watered down, blue acrylic. So using it almost like watercolor, which we've had a lot of practice with. And just glazing it right across that already dry surface which as you can see is making it have a tint of blue. So I use glazing techniques all the time when I paint, just, just interchangeably as I go. One minute I might be scumbling, the next minute I might be glazing. Um, but these are all really handy techniques to know as you're trying to muddle through a painting. It can be a challenge. These are good things to know. Um, I have one more little space left. So say I'm looking at this and I realize overall, oh, it's really much darker than that overall. Get a little bit of transparent black on my brush. That's a little dark. So just clean my brush again and just drag that existing darker value right over the whole thing.
because it's transparent and just slightly watered down, I'm still able to see that brushwork underneath my glaze. This is an example of a painting that I did a lot of glazing in. Um, when I started this painting, it actually, the whole painting was done in black and white, strictly black and white. I was just doing a value study. Um, and then as I got more invested in the painting, I decided that I wanted it to be a color painting. Um, so instead of going back and like changing every color and basically starting from scratch, um, I had originally had like a lot of really beautiful texture in this that I had applied with the black and white paint using scumbling techniques, as you can see here. Um, but, but then I decided that I wanted it to um, be a color painting. So I actually glazed all the color. I just used transparent glazes of different browns that I, I mean, pretty much this whole painting is browns and like it's kind of green, kind of bluish gray. So it's not like a super bright painting by any means. It has very neutral tones, but all the color you see in this painting was applied with glazing. Um, I feel like the areas that you can actually see it the best is the background. This, these are what the wooden tables that we have at school that are brown and wooden, but they're shiny. Um, and you can see my existing brushwork underneath, but I then went in and glazed that brown color over it. Um, and because it was done with a transparent glaze, I was able to see all my values underneath. I was able to still pick up all those beautiful textures that I originally had put down with black and white through the glaze, but now only this painting exists in color. So that is glazing. This is a painting that I had done a really long time ago of a goldfish uh, and I'm just showing this as an example because it I feel very clearly shows all three of those different techniques um, that I just taught you how to apply and I mean, painting is hard all right as we're in sort of like the final stretch of this painting you're probably realizing that maybe even for the first time, if this is the first time you've ever used acrylic paint. Um, but as you practice, um, as you continue, as you repeat, as you keep pushing yourself to make paintings, um, you'll come up with even some of your own favorite techniques that you use and that you kind of lean on. Um, and you'll start to use these things just kind of intuitively as you, as you practice and as you keep pushing with your um, painting, but you can see that there are areas um, where I clearly used you know wet on wet techniques to create a transition from one color to the other. You can see that there are very definite areas where I used glazing techniques, especially in this like blue area. I had all these scales down here, um, and then I as I was looking at my photo, I realized that there was a lot of blue, cooler tones reflected into that. So I washed blues over that those textured areas to make it feel um, much cooler. I used lots of scumbling techniques to emulate scales and that rough texture of the, the fish's um, scales. I, used, I did use scumbling with a palette knife as well with some thicker paint in there. Um, I definitely used a lot of glazing techniques in the fins here to show that they were transparent against that blue background. Uh, so I feel like this is a really good representation of all of those techniques very clearly uh, shown in this one single, pretty small painting.